Welcome back to San Antonio Living. Uh, we are spending the next 30 minutes or so talking about addiction and recovery, hoping to help those of you who are either dealing it, dealing with it yourself or help someone that you know. And joining us are friends from the Sobo Recovery Center. Greg Hanley is here. He's the CEO. Alex Dragici, the Director of Operations, and actor Daniel Baldwin, who's always been kind enough to come in and uh, talk about his experiences and, and, of course, help those of you out there who are dealing with things like drugs and alcohol problems. Good to see you guys. Good morning. Thanks for coming this morning. I want to start uh, talking about teens and young adults because it is the summertime. And so we've got a lot of folks home uh, watching television today who maybe are seeing you for the first time and maybe they're learning for the first time that we have a recovery center in the Texas Hill Country. So I want to speak to those people and the parents that are uh, maybe looking for some help this morning. In the summer, do you see more young people having problems with drugs and alcohol? We get a, a big influx of people, of college kids, mm -hmm. that, um, or kids that have been away from school. They get home and the parents see really obvious changes in their behavior that maybe they were talking to their kid and the grades weren't there or something was going on, but then they come home and there's really obvious changes. Right, because you can hide a lot of stuff yeah, while you're a, at school. We and get a big uh, influx right after the end of school, for okay. sure. So if, if there's a parent at home who maybe thinks uh, the kid that came back from school is not the kid that they sent to school, um, what are some signs that, that they should be looking for? Summer classes. Summer classes? Summer classes. Summer classes. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to my summer yeah. class. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's a dead giveaway that there's some problems. Yeah, and, and you guys have been through this, too. You know, you understand what it's like to, um, you know, fool people, I suppose. And, and, and you kind of have, have seen how to do it. So what, what do I look out for as a mom? What do I look out for? Well, actually, in the, in the humor, I, there was a bit of seriousness to yeah. it. If your child was a relatively good student, whatever their normal level was, and you got a chance to see them after the first break and their grades were, oh, you know, try mm -hmm. a little harder. And then they crash and burn in the spring and you get that report. Yeah. What's the difference? What's happened? It's these behaviors and changes that you can see that are evident in a lot of things in their lives. And, uh, and also seeing them hang out with new friends mm -hmm. that, um, you know, are obviously people that uh, throughout life have been known as bad influences. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden he's part or she is part of the bad influence crowd, then something is going on. But the main thing I always say is trust intuition. And if you feel something is going on, something's yeah. going on. Then the obvious things, you get a kid come from college and he's lost 40 pounds mm -hmm. or, uh, or she has or all of, just, uh, it, it's pretty much just feeling it. And if you do, get a drug test and find out what's going on. Okay. Well, you say they're coming home and if they're actually not home because they're constantly going out and staying out all night right. and going to bars every night and different group of friends. So they might not actually be home. So that's a pretty red flag. Big red flag. Okay. Uh, there's a recent article in one of the magazines that you guys put together out at Soba, Texas. The magazine's called Recovery Today. The article is called Talking to Your Kids About Alcohol and Other Drug Addictions. And one of the things brought up in this article is that you should talk to your kids about their history, not just you know, here's where we came from, this is your uncle, but you also need to talk to them about their history with drugs and addiction. Does that kind of history um, play a part in perhaps my children's future? Family history? Mm -hmm. For sure it does. Mm -hmm. And especially, um, so I've talked to my kids since they were small mm -hmm. and and they knew that I had a drug and alcohol problem. My, and, and they were proud since uh, the time they were five. My daughter was going, I'm five years clean and sober. And <laughs> my sister would go, I, I don't know if I'd like that or not. Yeah. Well, they continued to do that. And now my son graduated uh, um, high school and he's getting ready to go to college. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it. We talked about how things have happened in our family and and there is a good possibility that uh, he inherited these things genetically that uh, he could be predisposed 
to ending up with, with problems. Mm -hmm. And he just decided on his own that it wasn't worth, worth the risk, yeah. <laughs> which I was, I, I'm just amazed and proud that, uh, that he did. And, but, yeah, you know, it is something to talk about for yeah. sure. More common than a sober parent, I think, is a parent who is a casual drinker, mom and dad who drink wine or drink beer every day of the week, you know, not getting into trouble, still making it to work, not alcoholics. How should people that drink talk to their kids about drinking? Well, and it, it doesn't have to be. I'm not um, saying that every kid or, uh, you know, the, they're going to have these choices. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to see people that are just stuck with the life of, uh, you know, you're going to be an alcoholic and, and scare them or, or anything like that. But when it comes to the drugs, I talked about what I gave up when I started smoking pot. Mm -hmm. That, uh, and it was sports and family and... Um, relationship with my parents and school grades and I said so no when you try that that you're at risk of giving up all those things that you like okay you know isn't it interesting though as parents we would have a reluctancy to to know how to talk to our children about a subject like this yeah. but if you got a ticket and the cop came to the door with them and they were driving 110 miles an hour you'd say what are you doing and you'd, you'd be really really amplified in how you would discuss this and what right. your expectations are this is illegal to drink unless you're 21 years old in 50 out of 50 states it is illegal to do drugs no matter what state you're in at any age and yet it's difficult to have that conversation as parents. I yeah. find it fascinating. It, what's interesting also is that, you know, I talk about drinking because I'm old school. I forget that there's other stuff out there, right? That's something that I've been around. But I think one of the bigger problems as parents that we don't touch on is the drugs that are out there. And a huge problem that you guys have mentioned, even here in San Antonio, is prescription drugs. These yeah. are things that are most likely in your house right now, and it's not illegal. You know, maybe you have a prescription pills from a back injury or yeah. whatever. Vicodins and Oxycontin, yes. they are. You got to be so careful. Here. Yeah. yeah. And kids know about that, yeah. and they get addicted to stuff, and they can actually, college kids can go and get about anything that they want. Mm -hmm. And um, Yeah, they say, I'm stressed out, my back hurts, yeah. and it just... I'm not sleeping, I have anxiety, and next thing they have a whole handful of pills, and they mix it up, and, um, and they have bad problems. They're in the colleges of ambulance, ambulances having to come to the college, it's almost always a combination of um, benzos like Ativan or Xanax, mm -hmm. a opiate, and alcohol. So they pile those three in, and, and the next thing, they're in an ambulance. They had one college that I work with had an average of 20 ambulance visits for overdoses every wow. weekend at their wow. college. It's shocking to me, you know, and you just don't think about these things all the time because you just don't realize that they're out there for whatever reason. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more about teens uh, when we come back. And we're also going to talk about enabling because there might be some things that you're doing uh, with your child or with the alcoholic or the person going through recovery in your house that might be enabling their problem. We'll talk more about that when we come back. Our friends from Soba, Texas are sticking around. Welcome back to San Antonio Living. We are talking with our friends from Soba, Texas. They're in the Texas Hill Country, ready to help you. Greg Hanley is the CEO. Scotty Brown is joining us. He's the co-founder of Soba, Texas, and actor Daniel Baldwin. Thank you guys for, for being here and chatting with us this morning. We just wrapped up a segment, Scotty, talking about teens and young people being home from college, and uh, we talked about a lot of things to look for. Let's talk about um, some things for the parent at home, who maybe is the parent with their eyes closed, the parent who is like, oh, yeah, yeah, you look a little skinny. I'm sure maybe you're just healthy. Uh, oh, yeah, you've been out, you know, all night. I'm sure you're just hanging out with your friends. Um, what, what are some no-nos as a parent that, uh, you know, that I should, should not do if I know I've got someone who's dealing with uh, drugs and alcohol? That you should not do? Yeah. As far I'd as probably like... probably like leave alcohol in the house and all that. And right. Things like that. But you also don't want to be too tough on them because then they're going to sneak around and do all that. Like, 
It's, My it's, wife lets them do what they want right? to do in it's a lot of ways. It's such a tough and, line. Yeah, it it's is. so hard because you want them to keep talking to you and yes. telling you what you're doing. At the same time, you got to put the hammer down, you know, and make yeah. sure that you are uh, paying attention to all the things that are going on around you. What about someone who uh, maybe has an older family member. So it's mom and dad at home and uh, they've got a, a, a older adult with a problem but they don't want to address it. Are they making it easier for that person to continue on with their addiction? Yeah, of course. And there's a lot of reasons why they don't do it. Yeah. Most of the time when I'm talking to people that don't um, want to talk to somebody, they're afraid of getting them mad. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, mm -hmm. and whether it's kids, parents, or Whoever it is, so, and you were talking about uh, kind of enabling. Mm -hmm. So, what's an enabler, and when do you take action? And it's kind of the where the line is is this: if you're seeing something starting to interfere with your kid, your parent, your husband, whoever it is, having a good life consistently. Right. Alcohol, they're getting in trouble. They and and a lot of parents end up in the hospital. They can't handle drinking a. But, you know, dad's now uh, that 12 pack of beer is he's uh, he's got some kind of problem that he's got to go to the hospital for. Well, talk about it right. because if somebody has a drug or an alcohol problem, you're either going to talk about it and communicate a way to get them some help at whatever level they're at, or something is going to happen. And some of the things that happen, you can't fix. Daniel, so. let me ask you, for for people at home who are afraid to talk to the person with a problem because they're afraid they won't like them anymore, well, well, what about the person who <clears throat> talked to you? Greg touched earlier on the genetic predisposition, and, mm -hmm. and it is a fact. So with that said, you've got an 18-year-old son who you're worried about now because he's got his DUI, it's starting to rear its head, and there's consequences. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the husband's getting drunk for 30 years every night of the week, and the kid's been watching that since he was uh, you know, an, an infant. Yeah. The problem is, is that it, there, it is in families, and often we'll get one in, and the, you know, the mom checks in, and the sister checks in, and, Oh, we, we watch this chain happen. It, it, it's about making the whole family healthy. Even if you're not the alcoholic or the addict, right. those people are damaged and have things that they need to work on. There's other 12-step programs that we can address and help them with, too. Okay, uh, this kind of brings us right into uh, a viewer question. This is from a San Antonio Living viewer wanting to know, what is the difference between the program at SOVA and uh, a 12-step program at AA? Or is there a difference? Yeah, there's a, um, so the program at SOBA is a recovery program that mm -hmm. has many aspects to it, psychological, psychiatric, nu nutrition, fitness, uh, medical. The 12-step program is a fellowship that's designed to, ha to develop relationships for people to be able to talk about things that they might not be able to talk about with people that don't have those problems. Okay. So, but the 12-step pro, the program, probably at 99% of the treatment centers, including SOBA, is part of the program. So if you have a group, uh, and especially with the young people, I need to know a lot of young people that aren't getting high. Mm -hmm. And one, and we need to have something to do besides go into a bar. And they go to these fellowships and hang out. They go to dinner before. Yeah. They'll go to, go into a meeting is like a, um, uh, is something that they look forward to doing. The fellowship, the mentorship is very important. I know that is kind of mm -hmm. the three of you right here. I mean, you're yeah. all you're all part of a club. Yeah. And we're connected. And you're all connected. That. And it's the hardest club to get into. You have to beat the <laughs> hell out of yourself to get into it. <laughs> Absolutely. But once you're in, you really need the help of those other people. How important is having a mentor, someone to uh, help you through this it's process, Scotty? Extremely important. I mean. And you want to get one, you don't want to have three to get the answer you want. You right. know what I mean? You want to have somebody, you want what they have, 
and you trust them, mm -hmm. and you go to them for guidance, you know. And uh, to win for him, taking me under uh, you, his Greg. wing, I would be a dead guy <laughs> yeah. by now. Yeah. And, and, and he guy. was yeah. under our wing because my <laughs> wing isn't big enough for, uh, for him. So yeah, he's <laughs> calling the troops. <laughs> but here's the thing: we got a tough case. It's not here. abnormal. This is what you guys do. <clears throat> and whether you're a 19-year-old at home who needs help, or a 56-year-old mom who's watching today who needs help, you can get that kind of guidance and that fellowship here in the Texas Hill Country. It's Soba, Texas, and we've got more when we come back. Welcome back to San Antonio Living. Uh, we made a little extra room <laughs> in here so that Alex could come back. Alex Strigici, <laughs> the Director of Operations at Soba, Texas, Greg Hanley, CEO, Scotty Brown, co-founder, and actor Daniel Baldwin. These guys are here to help you. They really, really are. And it's so true because we've got viewers who call in. They ask questions. They're looking for help. And I know you recently uh, talked to some viewers who were watching last time you were here. Yes, yeah, so, and not just last time, but on the last show on mm -hmm. y'all's sister channel. So on the sister station, yes. 20 minutes um, ago. 20 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, getting calls. So I, was, yeah. I got to some messages, so I just wanted to come in and address to Elvira that we did get her messages, and we'll have somebody reach out to her and That's make sure fantastic. that they can... Um, you know, help out if they can. You know, it, it, if there's just one person, it's well worth the time. It really is. This is an amazing program that uh, started uh, not in Texas, but we are so thankful that you brought Soba Texas mm -hmm. here to the San Antonio Hill Country. If you go online, if you've got questions, everything you need to know is there. Uh, insurance, most insurance plans will cover this, guys. So don't let that stop you. Soba Texas is in the Texas Hill Country. Parting words, it Daniel Baldwin. With the phone call. I know. Yeah, I always Daniel. look to you no, no, because you're my closer over there. This is Alex. This is Alex time. <laughs> yeah, it, Alex time. it starts with the phone call and, and it starts with the conversation. And if you need help to start a conversation with somebody you're trying to help, you can call us and, and they'll help you. All right. Think about the power of what we're doing here right now. This woman reached out. There's a very good chance we're going to save someone's life that this woman knows. Absolutely. We no. certainly appreciate That's the special. fact that you guys are here. Take a look at your screen. Soba Texas, the number is there. Call if you need help, and we'll see you next time.